Hello, hello, federal employees. It is so good to be with you today, and I'm super pumped about today's topic because we're going so deep, right? And I say that all the time, but today is deeper than deep, okay? We are going so deep into a topic that I am passionate about, and that is honestly super important for many, many federal employees in their retirement because often when I make a lot of these episodes, it kind of touches on one piece of retirement and just kind of one element of that piece often. But today I'm trying to go deep into the FERS supplement, okay? I wrote an article, and if you're on the video on the YouTube channel, you'll already have seen this. Um, I'm sharing a um, a page from my website. It's called The FERS Supplement, The Ultimate Guide, okay? Because like I said, I've written articles about the FERS Supplement, different aspects of it, but I wanted one spot, one spot where you could find all the answers that you need about the FERS Supplement. That is the goal of this piece of content on my website. So if you're on the podcast, just know that on the video version, I'm going to be actually scrolling through my website as I talk about this and show some visuals and things like that. But again, the podcast is going to be extremely helpful as well. Just understand that if you really want to, if you have time, sit down on your computer, watch the video, and as I explain every detail of the first supplement, so you know exactly how this is going to um, work for you. So again... For those special provisions out there, those law enforcement officer officers, those air traffic controllers, those folks, for you, I have something special for you coming. In a week or two, I'm going to do a the first supplement for special provisions because honestly, the rules are very different, okay? The rules are very different for traditional FERS and special provisions, so that's coming. So be patient. It's definitely coming. And again, for special provisions, a lot of things I'm going to be talking about today will apply to you just in a different way. Okay, so just know that. Be patient. It's coming. I'm going to make an ultimate guide for you as well. Okay, so without further ado, let's jump right in. So for those that are unfamiliar with the first supplement, I'll give you the basic 101. Basically, it is a bridge is what they call it, where they say, hey, many federal employees retire in their late 50s before they're even eligible to take Social Security age 62. And so this first supplement acts as a bridge that will pay out if you retire before age 62 and it'll keep paying until the month of you, the age that you turn or the time that you turn 62. OK, that's kind of how it works in a nutshell. And then honestly, there's a number of different names on the Internet that you might have heard for the first supplement. So it can get a little conflu- confusing. But here are some of the popular names. First, the first supplement, what the name that I use all the time. There's also the special retirement supplement or the SRS that's used all the time. There's the annuity supplement or social security supplement. And honestly, these are all talking about the same exact thing, the first supplement, right? So just be aware as you're looking at statements, as you're looking at, let's say, benefit estimates from your HR or you're Googling online, Many people call it different things, but they're all talking about the FERS supplement. Okay, now, if you're on the video again, I am showing this visual where, let's say you retire at 57, okay? You retire at 57, well, you're going to get the FERS supplement for five years. You're going to get it at age 57, 58, 59, 60, and 61, but guess what? At 62, it's going to turn off. Now, What you can do at 62 is you could turn Social Security on, okay? So then your first supplement would stop, but then, of course, your Social Security would start. Now, just because the first supplement stops at age 62 and you can turn Social Security on at 62, that does not mean that you have to. You still have the ability to take Social Security at any age between age 62 and 70, Okay, now, again, the first supplement will stop at age 62 regardless of when you take Social Security. Okay, regardless of when you take it, it will stop then. For example, if you're on the video, I'm going to share another chart where, hey, your supplement goes from age 57 to 61 if you retire at 57. Okay, but let's say you take Social Security at 65. Well, if you take it at 65 above 62, well, then your Social Security is going to be higher than it would have been, 
but you have to wait three years, right? So that's a give and take, right? So you may have a gap where your, social, your first supplement stops and when your social security kicks in. So that gap has to be filled with something. And most of the time, that's your TSP. And often with my clients, when it does make sense for them to delay social security, then it often does make sense and it is worth it to take maybe a little extra out of their TSP during that time so that their social security can grow and get bigger, and then when they kick on, of course, they need less from their TSP year to year, right? So something to think about. Again, I'm not saying everyone should delay Social Security. It just depends, but something to think about. Okay, now, the next question is, who is eligible for the first supplement? Because not everyone, okay? Not everyone is eligible. There's three things that you have to meet, three criteria that you have to meet to be eligible for the first supplement, okay? The first is you have to be in the FERS retirement system. And I say this kind of out of jest, but it gets confused sometimes. And if you're in the CSRS system, then you're not eligible. You are not eligible. It's the FERS supplement for FERS employees. So you have to be in the FERS retirement system. Perfect. The next criteria is you have to be under the age of 62 when you retire. Okay? If you retire at 63, it doesn't matter how many years of service what system you're in, you're not eligible. You have to be under the age of 62. That's just one of the rules, okay? And the last criteria, which is probably the hardest to meet, is are you retiring with an immediate retirement? And that does not include MRA plus 10, okay? So we're gonna dig into those a little deeper. The first two are pretty self-explanatory. First, be under first, pretty simple. Next, be under age 62, pretty simple as well. Now. To retire with an immediate retirement. This one gets a little hairy, and some of you may be very familiar with what that means, but I'm gonna dig in a little more detail for those that don't, okay? So, under FERS, to retire with, with what they call an immediate retirement, you have to meet some criteria. And that is, you have to have reached your MRA, or minimum retirement age, with at least 30 years of service. So, for example, back with that example that I gave with someone starting their first supplement at age 57, that means their minimum retirement age was 57 or earlier, okay, and they had at least 30 years of service. That is why they retired at that age. Again, for you special provisions first, this does not apply to you. It's different for you, okay? Another guide is going to be published a few weeks from now. Be patient. It's coming. Okay. But for traditional FERS, these rules will apply. Okay. So the first criteria, like I just mentioned, meet your minimum retirement age, which is between age 55 and 57. For many of the people listening, it's going to be between 56 and 57. Okay. And you have to have at least 30 years of service at that point. That's the first one. The next one is you have to have reached age 60 with at least 20 years of service, okay? That's the next criteria for an immediate retirement, again. So let me break this down. You have to be eligible for an immediate retirement to be eligible for the first supplement. And to be eligible for an immediate retirement is you have to meet the criteria that I'm talking about right now. Okay, so there's a couple layers here. Again, if you want to, if this is if this is not gelling either on the podcast, on the YouTube video, go check out the article and the link you may see in the video. This isn't accurate; it's still being published, and so there will be a link in the description below if you you can check out the article that's associated with this. Perfect. Now, the last option that you can use to be eligible for quote unquote an immediate retirement is age 62 with at least five years of service, okay? And, but we already know if you're older than 62 when you retire, you're not eligible for the first supplement. So if you retire at age 62 with at least five years of service, you are eligible for an immediate retirement, but you are no longer eligible for the first supplement, okay? Something to think about. Now, I guess I lied. There's actually one more way to be eligible for a immediate retirement, okay? And that is by reaching your MRA with at least 10 years of service. Now, you may be confused because I just, at just a few minutes ago, I said, hey, a different criteria was to meet your minimum retirement age with at least 30 years of service. So what is this doing here with your minimum retirement age with at least 10, right? Obviously, just 10 years of service is much, much easier. Well, there's 
dramatic downsides to the MRA plus 10 retirement. First, your pension's going to be decreased unless you postpone it, okay? There's dramatic downsides that you definitely want to look into. And the MRA plus 10 retirement that I just mentioned, you are technically eligible for an immediate retirement, but you are not eligible for the first supplement, okay? I just want to bring it up that that is technically an immediate retirement, but is you would be ineligible for the first supplement if you retire with this type of retirement. Okay, so I know I just went down a deep rabbit hole of you know, being eligible to retire with immediate retirement, then to be eligible for the first supplement, but it's important because, of course, this is the ultimate guide so that you know exactly if you're eligible, and then, of course, we're going to go into how much you're going to get. Okay, now, on my website, I got a nice chart here with your birth year, as well as what your minimum retirement age would be based on that, okay? Basically, if you were born 1970 or after, your minimum retirement age is 57, okay? And if you were born before 1970, then it will be between, probably, for most of you folks that are not retired yet, mm, it's going to be between age 56, 57, right in there. Or maybe, you know, for those a little older, between 55 and 56, okay? Now, the next question is, how do we calculate the first supplement, okay? This is a big, big question. How do we calculate it? Because we know when we're planning for retirement, we wanna know our numbers of what income we're gonna have. This is a big step. So the formula is basically this. It's your years of credible service divided by 40 times your social security benefit you would get at age 62, okay? Let me break that down. So the first thing you gotta do is, how many years of service do you have? That's the first question. Let's say you have 30, okay? So you take 30 and you divide it by 40, okay? So that means 30 divided by 40 is 75, 75% basically. So your first supplement would be 75% of whatever your age 62 social security benefit would be, okay? Again, I know it's hard to get numbers over podcast or maybe even over video, but definitely look at the article associated so that you can do this on your own. And that will be your estimated monthly first supplement. When you run that math, when you take your years of service, divide by 40 times your age 62 Social Security, that is your estimated monthly first supplement. Okay? <clears throat> Perfect. Now, one big note to make here. Most of the time, most of the time when you buy back military time, while it definitely can count for your eligibility to retire, bought back military time rarely counts towards your first supplement in the years of credible service for the first supplement purposes, okay? So if the vast majority of, let's say, your time in the, as a first employee is actually made up of military time that you have bought back, well then your first supplement might be a little less than otherwise, okay? Something to note for those military vets. Thank you for your service. But again, that's one downside of the vast majority of your time being military time. Something to think about. <clears throat> okay, perfect. So now you may ask, hey, one of the parts of the formula is my age 62 social security benefits. Where do I find that, right? So for those that haven't already, go to ssa.gov, okay? ssa.gov, that is the Social Security Administration's website, ssa.gov. Go to that website and make an account and request a social security statement, okay? That is where you find information about your social security benefits. Now, this statement is gonna have your estimated benefits at different ages. And if you look at page two of your statement, you scroll down a little bit on my website, I've got a nice visual of what where to find it exactly where it's gonna say at age 62, your payment would be about X and it'll give you a number. And that is the number you can plug in to the first supplement formula to give you a start. Now, if you're young, let's say you're in your 20s or 30s or even 40s, then this won't be perfectly accurate. And honestly, it's not gonna be perfectly accurate until you retire, but it'll get you a place to start because Social Security is just estimating your benefits. And as you earn more, as your salary changes, the, the investment's going to change as well. But the closer you are to retirement, the more accurate it's probably going to be. Okay, perfect. So let's do an example. 
Let's do an example. Let's say, like I said before, you have 30 years of credible service, non-military time, okay? You divide that by 40. And some people ask, hey, where does the 40 come from? What, what, where does that come from? Well, that's just the number that is in the formula. There's some thoughts that basically what they're trying to do is how whatever, you know, percentage of your entire 40 years of working ability that you spent with the Fed, that is the percentage they want to give you of your of your Social Security benefits. But that's just a, a kind of a, a guess, I guess. Um, I haven't seen OPM come out and say that, but maybe they have. Um, but the 40 is just a fixed number in the formula. Okay, back on track. So let's say you have 30 years of service. So you take 30 divided by 40. That is 75% of your age 62 Social Security benefits. Perfect. Well, let's say your age social your age 62 Social Security benefit is 1,500. So if you do the math, you take 75% times 1,500, then your estimated monthly first supplement is 1,125. Okay, so that would be every month you get a check for 1,125. Perfect. Okay. Again, if you're on the podcast, the numbers are, it's probably hard to follow, but definitely check out the YouTube channel and hopefully this is still helpful. <clears throat> okay. Now the next big question is, hey, now that I've calculated my first supplement, great. What's the next step? Well, the next thing to know is that's not the end of the game. <laughs> okay. You're not out of the woods yet. And the next thing is the first supplement is going to be taxed. Okay. It counts as income and it's going to be 100% subject to tax, okay? Social security, when you start taking social security later, let's say at 62, 65, 67, 70, whenever you start, social security is only, uh, at least as of as the law stands today, only 85% of your social security benefits can be taxable. If you have lower income, it'll be less, but for most feds, it's gonna be 85%. Now, the first supplement is 100% taxed, something to know. Okay, so again, let's do another, just based on the previous example, where your monthly benefit from the first supplement was gonna be about 1,100. Well, what if your tax is about 20%? Well, you gotta take out 20% and you're left with 80%, which is close to about $900 after taxes, okay? Something to know, make sure you, t you run that when you are running your retirement numbers. <clears throat> Perfect. Now, the next big thing to know about the first supplement, reductions. Yes, you gotta love reductions. So, the only time that your first supplement is gonna be reduced is when you are working or you have business income in retirement, okay? If you retire from the Fed and you are done working, you have no other income except for retirement income, then you're good to go. The reductions are not gonna affect you. Okay, because OPM, they have a statement that I've included in the article. And basically what the statement says is, hey, we only look at earned income when it comes to reducing your first supplement. And earned income is not what it sounds like. Okay, their definition of earned income is W-2 income. So let's say you go get a job and even a part-time job that may make a significant difference. Let's say you get a job or you have a business. So you have business income. Okay, those two things are the type of income that can reduce your first supplement and you definitely wanna look out for. Okay, so the question is how much can my first supplement be reduced by? Well, it can be reduced down to zero. Okay, is a short answer. It can be reduced all the way down to zero if you make too much money from a job or a business in retirement. Let's do an example. Basically for every $2 you make over the annual limit, your first, supplement, your first supplement will be reduced by $1, okay? So, for example, in 2020, the limit is about 18 grand, a little over 18 grand. In 2021, it's almost 19 grand, okay? So basically, for every $2 you make over the limit, then your first supplement's gonna be reduced by a dollar, okay? So if you make $50,000 $50, over the limit, then your first supplement's gonna be reduced by 25 grand, Okay, now, and that, that's probably gonna be your entire supplement most, in most cases, okay? Perfect. So again, on my website, there's gonna be a nice example of kind of running you through the numbers, 
Um, but that's definitely something to think about. So the next question is, how does the reduction occur, right? How does it actually happen? So basically OPM, every spring, they send out these surveys, these lovely surveys, okay? To all, everyone receiving the first supplement. They say, hey, how much earned income did you have the previous year? And you fill that out. And obviously you wanna be honest because they have your tax return and they, they know, okay? So you wanna be honest. You, you definitely report your earnings, your earned income, again, that's W-2 income or business income, not TSP, not pension, not anything else like that, okay? This is just W-2 income or business income. You report it and, and then basically in July, of, in the spring you report it and then in July, they start reducing your benefit to make up for what you had made. And if you didn't make anything over the limit, then of course your benefit's not gonna be reduced at all. Okay, perfect. Now, before I sign off, I know this is a long one, but really hang with me for just a little bit longer. There's a few common questions that I get all the time. The first, how do you apply for the first supplement? How does it even work? Well. Good news, you don't even have to apply. If you are eligible, when you retire, it will automatically be paid with your pension payment. It comes at the in one payment, one lump sum, okay? Comes together. Perfect. Now, the question is, how long does it take to get the first supplement once I retire? Well, I've made a whole host of videos on how long it takes, and it takes a little bit before you get your first supplement or your pension at all. Um, Basically, um, when you file your application and OPM's working on it, it's gonna take some time to get what they call interim payments, where about three months in to retirement, let's say you stop working about three months in, on average it takes about three months, it can take longer, and certainly has in some cases. OPM's very backed up right now, <laughs> so it, it certainly can. Um, then you start getting a piece of your pension in your, um, of what you should get, right? Now, once OPM has fully processed your application, then they will back pay you for anything they missed, as well as start paying you the full amount, okay? That's kind of how it works. Um, so it's gonna take some time to get the full amount for your pension and your first supplement. It's just gonna take some time. Now, next question. Will the first supplement be eliminated? Right? Will Congress come and say, hey, we're not paying for this anymore, right? Is that gonna happen? Well, it depends. It's been on the chopping block before, but it hasn't been chopped up to this point. Now, I can't speak for the future, but up to this point, it hasn't. Time will tell. Okay, now, again, how long will the first supplement last until the month that you turn age 62? That's how long it'll last. Okay, so the first supplement is helpful, very, very helpful, but you have to know your stuff. Know how it works, know how it's reduced, know how it's taxed, so that you can be prepared, have the right numbers going into retirement, so you don't have to deplete your TSP too bad, that you can retire the way you, that you want. That's what this all is all about. Thanks for sticking around, this is a long video, and hopefully it was helpful. Hopefully it gave you a deep dive into how this works, how it's gonna affect you. Again, if you really want another um, deep dive in this, check out the article, read through it, a lot of great information in there, and examples and pictures and visuals of how this all works. So. Have a great rest of your day. Good luck with everything. Retire confident. That is my hope for you. And I'll see you next time.